So for the last part here, we're going to talk about the phylum Arthropoda, which is an extremely successful phylum. Um, it is the most successful phylum, and it has the most successful class within it. Um, so this is, Arthropoda is going to translate into jointed foot. Um, which is good, but it really trans it, it, it means that they have jointed appendages. So that could be jointed antennae, mouth parts, walking legs, anything like that. Um, so this is going to be, you know, grasshoppers and butterflies and insects and spiders and that whole group. So the biggest thing that they're going to all have in common is that jointed appendages. Um, then they are also going to have an exoskeleton. So remember, exoskeleton means that that skeleton is going to be on the outside. That's what makes them nice and crunchy, and that's made of chitin. Now, this exoskeleton is not going to be able to get bigger. So what they're going to do is molting when they're ready to grow. And so what they'll do is shed the outer exoskeleton called ectasis, and the under, um, the under one is going to be a little bit bigger and it's also going to be soft in the beginning because it needs to get exposed to the air to harden up. So a lot of times after they molt they're going to hide because they're going to be susceptible to predators. Um, another thing that they're going to have in common is going to be their crazy compound eye. So here's a picture of their compound eye right here which is just crazy. Every little dot that you see here is going to be a separate lens. So they see completely differently and if you look at their head, I mean their eye takes up most of their head. Every little dot that you see is called an omatidia. That's going to be the little parts that make them up. Okay, now let's talk about some other um, things about them. They're going to have an open circulatory system, so their um, blood is going to mix with their body fluids. They're going to have a nervous system. Um, some of them are going to have a pretty decent brain. Um, as far as their respiratory system goes, they're going to um, have these little openings in their exoskeleton called spiracles, which are like little dots along their abdomen. And then they're going to have an excretory system composed of something a little bit more advanced called malpighian tubules. And these are going to be little, you know, tubules where they're going to have a little bit more excretion occurring um, and more extraction of waste from their blood. All right. Now we're going to get into some subphyla, and this gets just crazy. So crustacea is a huge group, and crustaceans are going to include crabs, shrimps, lobsters, and crayfish. Um, so these guys are going to be further divided into what's called decapoda, which are going to be shrimps, lobsters, and crabs. And if you look at the name, deca means ten, poda means feet. So these guys are going to have ten legs. Um, it's kind of funny. I think I've got... Uh, I think I still have this picture. Yeah, here we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I took this picture in Costa Rica and I was so proud because it was such a cool crab. And then I realized he was missing a leg. So um, this is a nanopoda, nanopoda, um, but you get the drift. Um, and then there's a shrimp as an example of that. Um, going further down the line, there's also going to be an infraclass called Cirripedia, which is going to be these guys, which are barnacles. And so um, these guys are considered to be arthropods because they have this little jointed appendage that sticks out of the little shell that they have. And you find these on like docks in the bottom of a boat and like on a whale, you find these little guys growing there. All right, going back to your notes. There we go. Um, now we've got the subphylum Chelicera. And Chelicera are going to be um, anything that has Chelicera, which are going to be um, fangs, right? And so um, we'll talk about the class Arachnida, which are going to be your spiders. So let's go uh, here. Spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. So um, here we've got your scorpions. Then you've got your mites, and these are all going to have eight legs instead of six, right? Um, then you've got your spiders. Now, if we were to look at a diagram of these guys, a couple of things that are interesting is there's their chelicera. They're also going to have pedipalps, um, which are going to be kind of like little feelers in the front. If you've ever seen a tarantula walking, how they do that. And um, those can actually be used to hold on to their mates when they're um, having um, sexual reproduction occurring as well. Um, another thing about these guys is they have these called book lungs. And book lungs are just going to be specific to these guys. And um, the, the name comes from someone who discovered those and said, wow, it looks like a bunch of books on a shelf. Let's call them book lungs. Um, so that's going to be Chelicerata. Then we've got the um, horseshoe crabs, which are going to be class Xyphosura. And I know on this PowerPoint, I actually listed as a different um, class 
but we're going to go with Xiphosaura for here. Let's see. But um, horseshoe crabs are pretty neat looking. Here they are. Um, so I'll move this up so you don't see that anymore. There you go. Um, so very prehistoric looking guys. You see these on the east coast of the United States. They can be really, really tiny. They can get to be pretty big. We've got some that you'll look at in the lab. And they have a compound eye. And they actually have bright blue blood. And that blood has anti-cancer properties. And they're actually starting to use these guys for anti-cancer research. So just a kind of cool side fact about these guys. All right. Going back to your notes. The next subphylum is going to be Hexapoda. Hexa means six, so this is going to be our um, insects. So within subphylum Hexapoda, we have class Insecta, and this is going to be the most successful phylum on Earth, or class, sorry. Oh, and I forgot up here. Subphylum Myriapoda is going to be your centipedes and millipedes. I'm so sorry. Um, so let's look at those really quick because we're almost at the end. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is going to believe be a I believe be a millipede and that's in a group called diplopoda and you can see that um, they actually have four legs per segment so two on each side per segment and that compared to a centipede which is chilipoda and that actually has two legs per segment one on each side centipedes tend to be um, have a venomous sting um, millipedes don't that's another difference between them now let's talk about the class insecta um, class Insecta is actually going to go through something that's called metamorphosis, which just means change. And that means that their larval stage is going to look completely different from the adults. So here's the larval stage um, with a caterpillar, and then it's going to make that pupa or a chrysalis or a cocoon. And then it's going to come out as a completely different looking adult, right? So that's the metamorphosis that those guys go through. All right. Back to your notes. Um, so that's going to be the phylum Arthropoda. Now the last phylum that is going to be in this video in this section is going to be Echinodermata. And Echino is going to translate to spiny and Dermata means skin. So these guys are going to have spiny skin. This is going to be sea stars, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, those types of things. So as far as their body plan goes, they're going to have an endoskeleton, which means that their skeleton is going to be inside their body, just these bony plates. They're going to have tube feet, which are going to be little feet that they can use to like stick onto something and pull themselves over. And that's going to be powered through what's called a water vascular system, which is going to be a hydraulic system that they pump water into to move and move their tube feet. And the way that water is going to get into them is through what's called a madreporite. So... Hopefully we can pull this up and you can see all these different parts here. Okay, so all of this white that you see here is going to be that water vascular system. That little thing right there is called the madreporite, and that's going to be the plate that's going to allow water to get into the water vascular system. And then it's going to reach these ring canals, and then it's going to radiate out into these radial canals. And then underneath you can see those tube feet that they're going to use to go from place to place. So that's going to be the basic body plan. Now let's get into the classes. First class, Asteroidea. Well, aster means star, literally, and so here are your sea stars. Um, these guys are great. They usually have a body pattern of five arms or multiples of five, and they can regenerate, um, which is really cool. So if you were to pull off one of their arms, they can completely regenerate a new one. Then the next class is going to be Ophiuroidea, and that's going to be our brittle stars. So you can see they have a central disc with arms coming off, but not really any tube feet. They can actually wrap around and kind of almost move like an octopus. So that's going to be the brittle stars. Um, also in Ophiuroidea are going to be these guys, which are called basket stars. They get to be really, really, really big, super cool um, little guys. It can be big. Then the next group is going to be the class Echinoidea, which literally translates into spiny skin. Um, <clears throat> and so these are going to be your urchins. Now here in this picture, you can really see those tube feet coming off, which is great. And so what they'll do is stick one out, stick to something, and then get shorter so they can pull themselves over. Also in this group is going to be um, the sand dollars. So sea urchins and sand dollars are going to be in the same group. Once again, you can see that five-piece body plan. And then moving on, we've got the crinoids, which are going to be your feather stars, and also are going to be your sea lilies. You can see why they're called that. 
And then finally, holothuroidea, which is going to be your sea cucumbers. Um, so here's a sea cucumber here. This is actually me joking around with one when I was in the Bahamas, supposed to be doing uh, shark research, but there I am goofing around. Um, but anyway, what's crazy about these guys is they are um, capable of doing something called evisceration, which is where <clears throat> if something is threatening them, they can actually spit their guts out. And that makes them look unpaddled unpalatable to a predator and might even stick to them and tangle them up and then they can slowly creep away and they have a spare pair uh, a spare set of organs inside them just to allow them to do that so pretty crazy group and what's really crazy is to think about the fact that echinoderms in general are our closest relatives that don't have a nerve cord so kind of weird to think about so chapter 34 is going to get into that and that's it for chapter 33